Now before we really go in and set up SnapMirror relationships of all sorts, it's very important that we first have a look at the key elements that can make up a SnapMirror relationship. Mind you, we will first concentrate on asynchronous relationships between individual volumes. So to start with, we need two volumes. The source volume should be a regular read-write volume, but the destination volume should be of the type DP, and DP stands for Data Protection. And typically, the source and destination volumes will be in two different SVMs in two different clusters. And then, when creating a relationship, this relationship will be of a particular type. The default type is XDP, which is equivalent to a Vault relationship, so that's for backups. The other types are DP, for disaster recovery purposes, uh, LS for load share, which will be dealt with in a later module, and TDP, which is Transition Data Protection, which is beyond the scope of this course, because it deals with migrating data from a 7-mode cluster to ONTAP. Now please refer to the resource section of this module if you want to go over this once more. Then a vital element of the relationship is the schedule you want to apply for the incremental updates of the relationship. This means that based on a schedule, a snapshot will be created on the source volume and all the new blocks will be replicated to the destination. Another vital element is the snap mirror policy that is connected to the relationship. A snap mirror policy can have multiple rules. And in these rules, right now, the important fields are the keep parameter, which defines how many snapshots to keep on the destination, and the snap mirror label field, which defines that during an update, the source volume will be scanned for snapshots with that label. Now let's look at these rules. The first rule says that when the rule is executed, it will be searched for a snapshot with a snap mirror label that is created by the snap mirror update on the source volume. So that's not something for you to create, it's done automatically. The second rule searches for a snap mirror label called retention on the source volume and will keep 52 snapshots at the destination. So the result of this policy will be that you replicate a single snapshot for disaster recovery purposes and keep 52 snapshots of the snapshots that have the retention label. And these snapshots are there for restore purposes, not for failover. And finally, for these rules to function properly, you need snapshots with a label on the source volume. This can be realized by connecting a snapshot policy to the source volume that creates snapshots with a specific label on a scheduled basis. And here's an example of this snapshot policy with a single rule that can be connected to the source volume of a relationship. Mind you, you can have up to five rules in a single policy. So we see that one snapshot is created on a weekly basis and it will have the snap mirror label retention. Now just to make sure, in the snapshot policy you only create snapshots that are not created by the snap mirror engine during an update. Now let's do it. First we'll use the command line interface and then we will use System Manager. 